All right, uh, before I start the video, I wanted to comment on my style of videos. Um, uh, first of all, I don't like making really polished videos and uh, making a script and graphics and all that stuff. I've done that before. I did that once on a microphone series that I was really, really proud of and nobody watched it. I had zero viewers watch that. Um, so I've given up on that. It's just too much work. Um, so it's more of a video blog about what am I doing in the garage today, right? That kind of thing. Anyway, um, so it, it leads me to what I wanted to talk about with the way that I go about designing things, right? So I hope that people aren't just learning about transistor curve tracers, but my intent of the video is really my process of how do you go about designing something that you've never done before or something new. Um, and so the way that I did it was a lot like you might do at a job. If you have an idea, you want to prototype it, you want to prove its feasibility, then you might get funding for it. They say, well, go into a beta stage and then we'll make a decision at the end of that whether we want to continue or not. So you're always kind of gradually sneaking up on it. You don't just go for it, you know, you kind of sneak into it. So if you've seen the way that I, that I attack this, the first thing I did was, well, what can I use in the shop without building anything at all? Uh, I could use the function generator that I have, the oscilloscope that I had, a couple of resistors, and boom, you can kind of trace out a curve. And you say, okay, well, what's the next step? Well, I need a higher voltage than my generator outputs. And so I investigated a bunch of circuits. And um, so the one that uh, Tektronix uh, decided to use uh, was this here. And it's a, it's a, it's a fancy uh, uh, amplifier and it runs off of plus and minus 30 volt rails and it's it has voltage gain so you can step small voltages and it does a gain a voltage gain amplification which is interesting um, so i thought well that'd be that'd be cool to build i actually i actually modeled this in spice to just kind of get myself familiar with it and then i said nah i i think there's an easier way to do it and um and then this over here also was the same way is they said, okay, well, we're going to go ahead and step up the voltage with a, um, uh, with a transformer. I thought, well, that's a really, really good idea using a transformer, but they have an expensive transformer they had wound for them. Well, you know, what can I do just as a feasibility? And I says, well, I could use a transformer backwards, right? Well, I could actually use that for, forever, right? It seems to work. I, I, I did that test. I, I built up a prototype with just the transformer. Then I said, okay, next step is I need a step generator. And I looked at step, step generator uh, uh, circuits. So this one, this one had a step generator circuit over here and it looked quite complicated. And I went, hmm, and it's all transistors. And I, hmm, I said, I think I could do that better. And so my first idea was, well, I need a step. I'll use a Arduino and generate a ramp, well, I'll need a digital analog converter. So I'll get one of those I squared C analog converters. Um, and I, I've got some on order for another project, but I figure I'll just use those. I'll, I'll ramp it up, I'll ramp it out. I can make triangle waves. I can make step stair step waves. I'll just use those I squared C parts. And you certainly can do that and that'd be great. And I thought, well, but that's kind of overkill for this project. So um, then I ran into this this schematic which used which used a counter and i thought well that's a much more intelligent way to do it with just a, a r2r ladder as the as the dda because we're not looking at much precision and we're not looking for many steps we only we only need you know seven steps total we don't need a and we don't need to vary them very much right so i figured well i'll just use the arduino for that because it requires me to not build anything it's already done and i could write a very very simple program that just counts to seven and yeah so then i added that well Okay, so now that I have it working pretty good, my next step is, okay, I can sort of measure NPN transistors, but I can't measure PMP transistors yet. That's because everything flips pol pol polarity. Now, I have it built into the circuit. I have this switch already, which is an NPN PNP switch. And that takes this high voltage section out of the transformer and just flips it. That's all it does is flips it. So that's a really easy thing to add. The other thing that then you run into is, well, Remember the way that we measure current is through a 100 ohm resistor. And um, it, we, we have positive voltages across that resistor right now. Well, we'll have negative voltages across that resistor. Now, is that a problem? A lot of the curve traces say, no, it's not a problem. You just push the invert button on your oscilloscope and, and 
change your X and Y, and, and then, you know, anyway, you, you can fix it on, on, on the oscilloscope, and I think, nah, I want everything positive. So, um, so I'm going to step, an, uh, one more final step, which is, um, which is this circuit. I've just added this, uh, added this yesterday. Um, so what is this? Well, it's an op amp buffer, and it takes the voltage across that 100 ohm resistor, and I know it can either be plus or minus, and I know it can't be very high in voltage because it's, it's, it's across 100, decay, 100 ohm resistor. So it's not going to be the 50 volts that I generate. It's not going to be plus or minus 50 volts. It'll be plus or minus a few volts. And so uh, I've run that into this circuit. So let me, uh, let me show you a picture of that. So this first picture is of a little PC board that I made a long time ago. I made a whole bunch of... PC boards that just had little bits and pieces of different types of circuits, and I figured I'll, I'll, they're kind of generic, and I'll use those in the future sometime. Well, here's a chance I get to use one. So I built this little board, and it, it, it accommodates two 14-pin uh, devices, and the, those two devices are quad op amps. And then they have a little area to put uh, uh, different types of resistors around them, and you can make them into inverting amps, non-inverting amps, uh, uh, instrumentation amplifiers. You can, you can wire them any way you want. And so what you've seen here is I've loaded on the um, surface mount parts to um, make a particular, particular circuit. And let me show you a drawing of that circuit that I'm making. Okay, so this is what I want to use. I have a, a voltage coming in, and I'm going to send it through one buffer, and it comes out. And I'm going to send it through an inverting buffer, and it comes out. So I'll have a switch, NPN, PNP. And so positive, this, this will be positive ramps, and this will be negative ramps flipped up to be positive again. Um, and so this little circuit here is exactly what I have on the PC board. So this, this picture shows you... Uh, with a socket loaded and the um, and the uh, quad op amp loaded, um, so I've chosen to use a TL074, which is a quad op amp that will run on plus or minus 12 volt rails. So that's what I have in the circuit, and so that'll be work good. I immediately grabbed a LM324, and I went nope 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 nope. Those are ground references; they're not plus or minus. So uh, I had to go with the uh, TL074. So that's the little board over here. So the board uh, coming into the board is plus or minus 12 volts and ground. And then uh, this uh, yellow wire going over, it goes to that 100 ohm resistor. And um, so now we have, uh, oops, now we have a positive, and it's cleaner too. It buffered the, the noise out. So it's a much, much cleaner looking signal too, which is very pleasing. So I'm going to move this. I'm going to move this up, so you can see uh, everything goes in the positive direction, right? All right. So if I go down here and I move the scope to the inverting amplifier, now you see everything goes in the in the, in the down direction because I've just inverted the data. So. So when I have an NPN transistor, I'll leave it alone. And then when I have a PN transistor, it'll want to do this, but then I'll flip it and it'll come back up. So good. So uh, that's the next thing. Um, so from here, I've got the other half of the, um, of the op amp. I'm using two op amps out of four. And over here, I have them wired up to also be a plus and minus, uh, a gain of one and a gain of minus one. And I'm going to run that into the uh, collector voltage because that one's also going to flip polarity. But the collector voltage goes up to um, 50 volts or even higher. So I'm going to have to have some kind of a voltage divider uh, before I enter this board here. So I'll probably build a little voltage divider here. And uh, yeah, that's my next step. So anyway, I hope that makes sense about the uh, design process. Um, if you try to just go for it and build this all at the same time, you'll just run into headaches because when you go troubleshooting, you're not sure what's broken. But if you take a methodical um, way of building it, start with the basics, get something working, and then start adding to it, then when something doesn't work that used to work, you know it was the thing that you just added, right? So just, just, a, just an idea.